Hello, my name's Kevin Large and I'll be your instructor for today's video. This video is the first in a series of videos where we'll be looking at IP version 4 subnetting. This is the Lay in the Foundations video, so we'll be looking at digits and number systems, that's the binary number system, the decimal number system and the hexadecimal number system. We'll also be looking at bases and exponents and positional notation. So let's start with digits. How do we think of a digit? Well, a digit is a single symbol used to represent a number. What type of symbols could they be? Well, here's an example going back to the days of the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire. We have M for a thousand, D for five hundred, C for a hundred, L for fifty, and so on. The famous Roman numerals. So if we try to represent a number in Roman numerals, 2016, MM, 2000s, X, a 10, V, a 5, and the little I there, a 1, 2016. Well, it does work, there's no question about it, but try representing IP version 4 addresses, or even more, IP version 6 addresses in Roman numerals. You're not going to get very far. So time's moving on we move forward to the European form of the Hindu Arabic number system the one we're very familiar with where we have 10 digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 notice single symbols each time there are only 10 single symbols in the decimal number system okay so now let's have a look at number systems We'll start with the most common number system, which is the decimal number system, using those Hindu Arabic digits. This is a positional number system. We'll talk about that in a moment. And it has the digits from 0 through to 9. When we say positional, we actually mean that the position of the digits in the number represents the magnitude of that digit. The digits on the far right hand side of the number is in the ones column. If it's the next to the left, it's in the tens column. Left again, hundreds column. Left again, thousands column. So the actual position of the digit represents the magnitude of the number. Why do we use this decimal number system? Well, it's very, very, very human friendly. It's quite obvious the reason why. We actually have ten digits, eight fingers and two thumbs. Now computers, of course, don't have hands. Robots might have hands, but computers themselves don't have hands. What a computer uses is it uses hundreds of millions, if not billions, of little tiny electronic switches known as transistors. Those little tiny electronic switches only have two states. They can either be on or they can be off. So because there are only two states, we can only use two digits. Us as humans, we have ten digits, eight fingers, two thumbs, so we can have 10 digits in our number system. A computer can only have two states, 0 and 1, on and off. Hence we have 0 and 1 as the only digits we can use in the binary number system. This is extremely computer friendly because computers are full of these little tiny transistors. All the mathematics that goes on inside computers is controlled by the switching of little tiny transistors trillions of times per second. We also have the hexadecimal or base 16 number system. Again this is a positional number system so the position of the number determines the magnitude that that number represents. Only on this occasion we actually have 16 digits. Now this causes a problem because we can go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 but we can't put 10, 11, 12 because they have two digits and we must only use a single digit. So we go 0 through to 9 and then we represent 10 with an A, 11 with a B, 12 with a C, 13 with a D, 14 with an E and finally 15 with an F. So we're actually going from 0 to 15, 16 digits. Why do we use hexadecimal? Other than confuse people, well it's actually very very useful. It's a nice way of compacting long strings of binary digits. 
because each hexadecimal character can be represented by four binary digits, we can actually make a binary number one quarter of its size if we represent it in hexadecimal. So it's very good at compacting down huge binary numbers. And this is of course why it's used in MAC addresses, physical addresses on network cards, and why it's used in IP version 6. OK, let's have a little look at the base and the exponent. We don't want to go too deep into this, but it is useful to know. So what is a base and what is an exponent? Well, basically the base is easy. It's, it's the number base. It's the base of the number system. For instance, decimal has 10 numbers, 0 through to 9. That's the base. So decimal is a base 10 number system, because it has 10 numbers. Binary is a base 2 number system, because it has 2 numbers, 0 and 1. And hexadecimal is a base 16 number system, because it has 16 numbers. 0 all the way through to F. Slightly trickier thing to work out is what's the exponent. Well, the exponent isn't actually too hard to understand. The exponent is simply the number of times the base has been multiplied by itself. So in this case, we have a base of 10, and it's been multiplied by itself 10 times 10. So we have two 10s multiplied by themselves to give 100. If we look a bit further into the base and the exponent, we run into an interesting rule of mathematics. Now we're not going to explain why this is the case, because it takes a little bit of mathematics and it's not really required for IP version 4 subnetting. So you can breathe a sigh of relief, but you do need to know that there is a rule of mathematics which states that any non-zero number raised to the power of zero is one. I'll say that again because it's very important. Any non-zero number raised to the power of zero, or the exponent zero, is one. So we can have seven raised to the zero is one, 999 raised to the zero is one, 9999.7384 raised to the 0 is 1. It's actually to do with what's known as the multiplicative identity. 1 is a very special number. It's the only number that you can multiply any number by and it will still result in precisely the same number. It leaves the number unchanged. And that has a little bit to do with why 10 raised to the power of 0 is 1. But we won't go any further than that. You just need to know any non-zero number raised to the zero is one. So, moving forward, 10 raised to the one, any number raised to the one is itself, so 10 to the one is 10. 10 to the two, two tens multiplied by themselves is 100. 10 to the three, three tens multiplied by themselves is 1000. And of course, this is where we get the columns from in our place system that we use for decimal. We have on the far right hand side the ones column, the next column is the tens column, the next column to the left is the hundreds column, and then we have the thousands column, and of course 10 to the 4 would be 10,000 and so on. Now if we look at uh, binary, binary of course the base is 2, because we only have two digits, 0 and 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1, it follows the rules. 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4, and 2 to the 3 is 8. So we have effectively the 1's column, the 2's column, the 4's column, and the 8's column, instead of the 1's, the 10's, the 100's, and the 1000's. If we move to the hexadecimal number system, where the base is 16, you'll notice 16 to the 0 is 1, it follows the rules. 16 to the 1, any number to the first power is itself, so 16 to the 1 is 16. 16 to the 2 is 16 times 16, which is 256. 16 to the 3 is 16 times 16 times 16, so it's three 16s multiplied by each other, which gives us 4096. So now we actually got a place number system which goes the 1s column, the 16s column, the 256 is column, and the 4096 is column. We can represent absolutely huge numbers in hexadecimal with a very small hex number. It's very good for compacting numbers down. Okay, let's move on to those placeholder or positional number systems. 
OK, we have a little table here. We're going to look at binary first, so base 2 number system. It has two digits, 0 and 1. And as you can see at the top there, we have 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, or 2 squared as it's sometimes called, and 2 to the 3, or 2 cubed. If we place in the numbers that those exponents and bases represent, we have the 1's column, the 2's column, the 4's column, and the 8's column. And you can see quite easily how this works if we fill in some representative numbers. So we put zeros in all of the columns. We have no 1s, plus no 2s, plus no 4s, plus no 8s. Obviously works out at 0. We put a 1 in the 1s column. Nothing else in any of the other columns. We have a 1. If we go right down to the bottom, you'll notice a 1 in the 8s column, a 1 in the 4s column, a 1 in the 2s column, and a 1 in the 1s column gives us 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 15. Now if you look very closely, you'll see why with hexadecimal, one hex digit can represent four binary digits. We have four columns there, four binary digits, and they allow us to use values between 0 and 15. And how many values is that? 16. Hex. That's why hex can compress down four binary numbers with one character. OK, moving on, if we look at the very familiar decimal number system. 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, and 10 to the 3. Do the maths. We have the 1's column, the 10's column, the 100's column, and the 1,000's column. This is, of course, very straightforward. Everybody's grown up being able to do this type of mathematics. We have 1 in the 1's column is 1, 1 in the 10's column is 10, 1 in the 100's column and a 6 in the 1's column gives us 106, and so on, all the way up to 9,999. And of course, this works perfectly well if we go to the hexadecimal number system. Now, in the hexadecimal number system, base 16, We've got 16 digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, which represents 10, B, which is 11, C, which is 12, and so on. But it works the same way. We have a four-digit hexadecimal number. On the right-hand side, we have what's known as the least significant bit. It doesn't matter what base number system you're working with. Uh, the one on the, sorry, the right-hand side is the least significant digit. So... The least significant digit is known as the least significant digit because it's the digit which makes the smallest difference to the number. If we put a 1 in the right hand column, it only changes the number by 1. If we put a 1 in the far left column, it changes the number by a huge jump of 4096. OK, so we'll fill the table out. And you can see all zeros gives us 0. A 1 in the 1's column, or 16 to the 0, gives us a 1. This is where it gets a little bit strange. If we put an A in the 1's column, because A represents 10, it's basically saying we have 10 1's, or 10. Look at the next line down. So we're looking at the fourth line down, we have 1F. That means we have a 1 in the 16's column, we have 1 16, plus an F in the 1's column, F is 15, which means we have 15 ones. So that's a 16 plus 15 ones, or 16 plus 15, which is 31. If we look at the next row, we have FF. F is 15. We've got a 15 in the 16's column and a 15 in the 1's column. Well, a 15 in the 1's column is easy. 15 times 1 is 15. But a 15 in the 16's column, that's a little bit more tricky. 15 times 16 is actually 240. So 240 plus 15 times 1, the F in the 1's column, 240 plus 15, 255. OK. And right down the bottom there, you'll notice we've got 2AA. That's a 2 in the 256's column. Well, 2 256's is 512. We've got an A in the 16's column we look at the A, it represents 10, so 10 sixteens is 160. So we've now got 512 plus 160, which is what? 512, 612, 672, 
and we also have an A in the ones column which is 10 ones. 672 plus 10, 682. Wow, that's quite tricky isn't it? Okay, so what have we looked at? We've looked at binary, decimal and hexadecimal. We've looked at exponents and bases. We've also looked at the positional notation system. You do need to know these. These come in very handy for subnetting, especially working with binary. If you can understand powers of 2 and binary, you're actually going to be halfway there when you come on to the subject of subnetting. OK, I'd like to thank you for watching that video. Tune in for the next video on IP version 4 subnetting.